Good morning, Covenant Life Church family. Excited about today's service. In fact, I'm so excited. I want you to take a moment to hit watch party on the Covenant Life Church page Facebook. Would you do that? Would you take a moment? Just take your, your smartphone out or your iPad and just hit share or watch party and it'll go to all of your all of your friends and they'll have an opportunity to join us this morning on Facebook Live. It's exciting. Take a moment. Do that right now just before we begin. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have you join us tonight on our, our, our program. We're excited about having a special guest with us. I want to take a few moments to introduce to you in just a, a moment. But before we do, we want to give people an opportunity to join us live um, right here on our Facebook page. And if you're watching YouTube live, we welcome that. I'm going to take a moment just to uh, start a watch party. And uh, if you're joining us, we'd like to ask you to uh, take the time to do that as well. Um, we're excited about uh, our, our topic tonight is we're going to be talking about um, the, the rapture of the church a little bit. We're going to be talking about some um, uh, events that are going to be taking place or that uh, and some that already have uh, been taking place. And we believe it's going to be of great interest to you to, to be uh, a part of of that. Uh, before we do, I want us to take a moment to pray, and um, and even before we uh, do that, I want to uh, have them. They're going to roll a video in just so I don't forget. I want to get that behind me before we get started because we have such an exciting uh, broadcast t tonight uh, that I know you're going to want to be a part of. Listen, everybody loves to hear about end time events. And uh, one of my great friends, uh, Brother Steve Holcomb, is with us. And um, Steve, uh, very honored to have you and um, and your wife, uh, uh, Veronica, um, uh, here in, in, uh, in our audience tonight. But I want to, um, us to um, to uh, share. I'm going to let you share in just a moment. And I've got some big questions to ask you. Uh-oh. <laughs> I hope I hope you're ready. But uh, anyway, uh, several months ago, Steve uh, did a series on Wednesday nights for about uh, probably about eight weeks, yeah. and it, it just kept getting bigger and deeper. And and uh, maybe sometime we can bring your timeline back in. And uh, he has this huge timeline that he had made, and where people can visually see events and things that are have unfolded and things that will unfold again. And um, and, uh, and we'll have to do that sometime. But I want us to uh, take a moment, and I want to ask them to go ahead and roll uh, the video in of some stuff that's coming up this weekend. Uh, this weekend is a huge weekend uh, for, for us as we are going to give honor to whom honor is due. We're going to be honoring all of our essential workers uh, in Knox County, Anderson County, Campbell County. And if you are an essential worker and in a, a specific field, we want you to come because we're, we're going to be having an outdoor service. It's not a drive-in service necessarily, although if you want to sit in your car, you can. But uh, we're going to ease back into the uh, sanctuary maybe on Mother's Day. But this Sunday, we're going to be having kind of a lounge chair out in the parking lot kind of service. And and um, and we got some uh, the the band's going to be playing and um, I'm going to be sharing, but we're going to take time out of service to honor some very very special people uh, that have put their life on the line, and uh, I'm very grateful to each and every one of them, and I want to make sure we honor them. But here's a, just a quick. Um, uh, just a quick announcement about that, and I'm going to ask uh, uh, our media director, Brother John, to take care of that and, and roll that in uh, right now, if you would, would mind do, doing that. Hey folks, Pastor Tony here. I want to take this opportunity 
to invite you to come be with us on May 3rd. On May 3rd, here in just a few short days, we're going to be honoring all the essential workers in the Anderson County and the Knox County and Campbell County and in other surrounding counties. We are going to take a moment out of service to honor each and every one of, of our essential workers. It's going to be a great day. In fact, it's all going to be outside. We're going to ease back in to this coming back into the sanctuary. And so this service will be entirely outdoors. Bring your lounge chairs. It's not a drive-in service. It is just a service where we are going to give honor to whom honor is due. We love you and you are personally invited. I want you to be my guest. Come and help me celebrate and honor these people who've laid their lives on the line. Would you help me? That is May 3rd, 10 a.m., Covenant Life Church, Norris Campus. Praise the Lord, we're back. We're excited again about sharing with you tonight. And I want to thank everyone for joining us in this midweek. This is hump day. We're getting over uh, the midweek and uh, getting ready to for the home stretch for the weekend. And wow, are we excited about what's happening. Join us uh, 10 o'clock right here at the Norse campus on Sunday morning. And we are going to have a great time giving honor to all of those who have put their themselves on the front lines. Well, we're excited uh, tonight to also have with us um, Steve Hokum. As I mentioned a few moments ago, Steve, how are you? I am blessed, Tony, and thankful to be here today. Well, we're excited about you being here with us. And uh, Steve, uh, you, you just your spirit always, I always tell Steve that he makes my baby leap uh, because uh, he'll get me all excited about the Word of God and and I don't know anybody who has a greater heart than you do for lost people. I, I, really, I really believe that. And um, you, you and I have been friends for quite some time now. And um, I want us to, Steve, you, you've, you've always uh, been a go-to guy for me when it comes to this end time stuff because of, of the time that you put into it, uh, studying it, and you're very observant to the times we're living in, and the Bible says this, I was thinking about this scripture, that the sons of Issachar, it said that they discerned the times that they were in. And there is a, a huge question that many of us, uh, I'm sure many people besides me anyway, I'm sure that have... Um, found themselves asking, and that is, what in the world is going on right now? And I guess maybe it seems like we may be coming to the end of it, hopefully. I hope it's not just temporary. I hope it's not something that, that we'll have to encounter again. But where do we go from here? Can you give me some thoughts on that? Well, I mean, a uh where do you start at? You know, it's like there's so much in the Bible that talks about, you know, even, even the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, you know, what are the signs of the times? You know, when are you coming back? What's the sign of the end of the age? You know, they're asking him these things. And then Jesus says, you know, there's going to be pestilence. There's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be famines. There's going to be all this stuff. But he says, this is just the beginning of sorrows. So I'm at, you know, pestilence, I mean, we see them. And, and they have been happening. I mean, you know, 100 and more years, 100 and one year ago, there was a, a really bad uh, plague that, that uh, come upon the earth. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people died. And then here it is another 100 years later that this, uh, you know, COVID-19 has come up. And it seems to be a really, you know, deadly thing. And, um, but Jesus warned us that these things would come, but the end is not yet. You know, Jesus also tells us, he gives us a command. He says, now learn. That's a command. Learn the parable of the fig tree. And that's what it says in Matthew. But if you go on into the other books, and I think it's Mark, he says, not just a fig tree, but all the trees. When you see its branches yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Likewise, when you see all these things happening, know that it is near even at the doors. So we're seeing all this stuff, and it's just not just this. I mean, you know, in the, 
in Matthew 24, it goes into great detail about a lot of the events that will happen. Um, it talks about the abomination of desolation. Jesus says, you know, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet, the Daniel, uh, Daniel the prophet, then, you know, you know the great tribulation is near. So there's a lot of things you've got to understand. What is the great, tri or what is the, um, the abomination of desolation? A lot of people don't even realize what it is. Well, before we uh, get into that, and I know that, uh, I, I know all, all I would have to say is tell me about that, and and we could spend a lot of time talking about that, and and it is vital. People need to know that. Would yes. You, you, well, it's agree? a command. God says to learn. You know, learn the parable. Yeah. We can see this stuff happening. Well, what what do you think in terms of of technology? What, I, what I'm seeing today is I don't know that church as we have always known it will ever be the same again since this. Because, for example, we have um, just here, our online attendance is probably up probably 900 times what it ever used to be and we've been streaming for years but uh, of course technology's gotten better our equipment's gotten better the investment from the church family has gotten better to reach the nations but what do you think in terms of technology what do we see coming well technology is great for reaching the lost and to sharing god's word you know it's just like everything everything can be used for good or evil you know, a lot of people use technology for evil. You know, God can make it all for good. But what I see coming is, um, you know, in the book of Revelation, it talks about every person will have to receive some kind of a mark in their hand or in their forehead or they won't be able to buy or sell anything. Well, some of the leaders of the world right now in looking into this COVID-19 and the vaccination are wanting to tattoo something in your hand you know, and where does this go? I don't know. You know, it, is it going to, is that going to be the mark? I, I don't know. But something, the Bible warns us about something being put in your hand or in your forehead or you won't be able to buy or sell. And now we're living in a time right now where the technology is here to where they can implant something in every single human being, which is what they're wanting to do. Um, and they use it as, you know, it's just a security, just like a microchip in your animals. You know, oh, you know, well, you need to, you know, make sure that, your kids microchip. If you don't love your kids, you'll, you know, if you love your kids, you'll have them chipped. It's just going to be one of the things. We love our animals, and we love that they're chipped. And if they're lost, you know, somebody can take it to the nearest vet, run a scan on it, and tell whose it is. But the Bible warns about this technology, you know, about do not take this mark that will allow you to buy or sell stuff. So, um, really, the microchipping is not something new. No, but and just like everything, everything is a gradual. I mean, just like if they came out with and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to do this. Well, of course, all the people going to say, no, we don't want a part of it. But it's just like sin. You gradually uh, accept this and you gradually accept it and you gradually accept it. Before you know it, you're falling off the edge. You're, you're a sinful man. We, we're all sinful. And there's only one Savior. And, you know, we, we need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But, I mean, you just look at how different things are from today than they were when we was a kid. We, don't, we live in a different world just 50 years later. You know, Steve, my grandmother told me a story many years ago about a, about a, uh, a frog. She used the, the story, and, uh, and I, I've read it since then in books, so I guess it's a story that's been around a long time about uh, she, you could take a, a frog and put it into boiling water, and it would immediately try to jump out and get out of it. But if you take that frog, put it in lukewarm or room temperature water, and then stick it on the stove, because it gradually gets hotter, that the frog doesn't really notice it like it would if it was hot. Frog legs for dinner, right? Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's sort of the way sin is, isn't it? It is, yes. Isn't that also, uh, I've noticed that that's the way it is in society, because... Um, you know, a lot of times things are just eased in. I, I'll be honest with you. I was watching ESPN, and I, you know, I love sports. I 
I, I like to keep up with the, the NFL draft. And, I, I, you know, I don't watch a lot of it during the season, but I like to see if some of the people I know may be getting drafted. And um, I was surprised at some of the language on it. Things that was just like an abomination back 20, 20 years ago. I mean, 10 years ago is accepted uh, on mainstream media now. And, and, it, and it's just like you said, it's a slow boiling water. And before you know it, I mean, we just, the Bible, the Bible tells us that in the last days that people will call what's good evil and what's evil good. I mean, we can see that now with, um, with everything that's going on in the world, um, the movies, the TV shows. I mean, you know, the, the agenda behind pushing everything that the Bible is against is prevalent in this world. I wonder why that is. Have you thought about that? Oh, I know. Satan is the god of this world, and Satan is fixing to be cast to this earth and have no more access into heaven, and he has great wrath coming upon these people because he knows he has a short time. Right. In uh, Revelation, I, I believe it's chapter 12, he talks about, um, it talks about that, the, that his time is short. Do you know the Bible tells us exactly how long it is? 1,260 days, 42 months, Time, time, and divide into times. Satan will literally rule on this earth for three and a half years. That's why Jesus tells us in Matthew, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, then great tribulation happens. In Revelation chapter 12, it tells us that Satan is cast to the earth. It says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because Satan has come down you having great wrath, and he knows he has but a short time. Right, and, and uh, it then goes on to say, I notice, and this is my favorite part, is that, and they overcame him. Rejoice ye in heavens. By the blood of the Lamb yep. and the word of their, of the, of their testimony. Right. And so our testimony is, is powerful, obviously. And, um, and we know the blood of Jesus is powerful. Um, Take a moment, Steve, if you would. I know our time is short, but take a moment because I have several other things I would like to ask you and get your thoughts on. Uh, but take a moment and give them just the Reader's Digest version of the abomination of desolation. Okay, well, the abomination of desolation, everything has to do with the Jewish people, the Jewish nation. In, um, in the book of Ezekiel, he says, I'm going to bring you back into your land, talking about the Jewish people, the nation of Israel. He said, you will be no more two nations, but you'll be one. And he says, I'm not doing this for anything that you've done. Now I'm paraphrasing, but I'm doing this for my holy name's sake so that people will know that I am God. Well, he cast them out of, of that land for 2,000 years. And, on, and he said, in Hosea, he says, after two days, he said, I will re we will be revived and he will come and live in our sight. Well, in, in, in Second Peter, we know that a day is like a, unto the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. We know that Israel was not cast off their land for two literal days, but 2,000 years looking back. And then he says he's coming back after he brings Israel back into the land. Well, they came back into their land in 1948. The abomination of desolation is when the Jewish people rebuild their third temple, which they have all, that, all of the utensils and everything for the animal sacrifices and all this stuff ready and prepared for this third temple. Now, Steve, let me interject something. Is that something, to, does that have anything to do with the ashes of the red heifer? It does. Um, you know, that's, that's crazy. They said the 10th red heifer will be the one that the Messiah will come back in. Well, if you, you do some research on it, they've been nine red heifers so far. 2,000 years after the last red heifer, now, if I'm not mistaken, Israel has a true red heifer that they're wanting to sacrifice for the cleansing of the people so that, that they could go on top of the uh, temple mount and rebuild this temple. Right. And it just so happens to be 70 years mm -hmm. after the rebirth of Israel. I mean, you know, if you look in, uh, in Daniel, you know, they was cast out of the land in Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. You know, for 70 years, they was cast out of their land, and then they was brought back into their land. Well, that was before the 2,000 years. But now we're 70 years past uh, Israel becoming a nation again, and they have a red heifer. The thing is, they believe that they have, in the book of Numbers, or Deuteronomy, I forget which one now, uh, but this red heifer has to be sacrificed at a young age. Like, and it, I think it's already almost a year old. So, I mean, they're close 
to sacrifice in this red heifer for the cleansing of Israel so that they can go back on the temple mount and build this third temple. And it's this third temple that Satan's going to stand in. Actually, a, one of these world leaders out here who is going to sign a covenant with Israel for seven years, that whoever signs that will be the Antichrist. But it's in the middle of that seven years that Satan actually enters into the Antichrist body and literally takes over on the earth. So, so the abomination of desolation is when we see them rebuilding that temple to start introducing animal sacrifice again. Yeah, in the middle of it, it's called the abomination of desolation. It's when the Antichrist comes in and sits on and, yeah, and claiming to be the Messiah, God, however he does it. Right. And it's at that point and Satan enters into his earth and then he sets up his image in the temple and wants everybody to worship that image. Mm -hmm. Steve, I was looking um, uh, online doing a little research today and I noticed that, um, you know, I think it's in Matthew 24. In fact, I think you mentioned, uh, you read, was reading that with me earlier where he talks about in Matthew 24 the, um, all the different things that are going going to be going on and he talks about um, a couple of things that I want to bring our attention to one he talks about pestilence mm -hmm. now people for years have have read that and many people I've noticed have never took time to really know what that means uh, because um, or for whatever reason but uh, a pestilence is a disease it is yes and it could be any kind of disease, really. Mm -hmm. But when it has such an effect on the land, um, it becomes a pestilence. When it becomes a pandemic, uh, it becomes a pestilence. And I, I was reading today and looking, and right now, I think in America, we're at around 60,000 people that they have, quote, unquote, uh, attr attributed uh, to their death being the COVID-19. Now, I know that there's a lot of concern about whether that's legitimate numbers. Uh, personally, uh, you know, my son-in-law is a doctor. He, he personally thinks there's really more than that. Um, just by, you know, uh, his experience working with it and, and, and you know, we're in different avenues and different uh, places that he is involved in uh, and serving as an MD. However, um, we know that some people um, have been very vocal about uh, accusing or making accusation about COVID-19 and it, and it really be something else. You know, of course, there's a lot of... You're walking on eggshells. Yeah, I'm walking on eggshells and I probably... Uh, shouldn't say a whole lot about that, but the point I'm trying to make is that we we've the the America has survived the swine flu. Uh, there are in America, I think there's over three thousand people a day die on our roads. Oh yeah, if you look, if you go back and do a little bit of research, I mean, people die every single year just for the common cl uh, flu. Um, smoking tobacco. I mean, why? Why do there's more people die of lung all this cancer. other stuff, lung cancer and and diseases and and alcohol and everything else? But it's legal to be to do that. You know, I'm gonna walk on eggshells too a little okay. bit myself. But you know what bothers me about this whole situation is, and every time I go to the store, I mean, it's packed. Uh, you go to certain stores, I mean, you have to stand in line and everything. And it's okay to stand in line at some of these stores, but it's not okay to gather at church. You know, or it's okay to, you know, what bothers me, and I'm going to go ahead and step on crack and say, you know, some of the leaders of, the, of this world say that, you know, abortion clinics, they do not want them to shut down. Why? But they want to shut the church they down. They want to shut the church down, which... And what does the Word of God say about the church in this day we're living in? You know, the Bible tells us, he says, encourage one another with these words, not forsaking yourselves to assembly together the church, 
even so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, why would God put that in there? Oh, Steve, tell me about the day. Now, that day is coming soon. We can see it, and that's what I, you know, there's so much information out there I would love to share with y'all. We are living in the last generation. Jesus tells, if you believe your Bible and what it says, Jesus tells us, he gives us a command. Now, learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see all these things happening, know there's near even at the doors. We can see all these things happening, but people are blinded to it. You know, just like when Jesus came the first time and he came to the, uh, the Sadducees and the, and the Pharisees and he says, you know, these scrolls speak of me, but you do not believe. You can discern the signs of the time. Or you can discern when, it's, uh, when the bad weather's coming, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Well, I don't want to be that generation. We should not be there. You know, we should say, hey, Jesus is coming. God says, I'm telling you these things before they happen so that when they happen that you know I'm faithful and true. We can trust his word, everything in his word. The prophecies are real. You know, the Bible talks about in Luke, when you see all the armies can pass around Israel, know that the desolation is near. Well, Israel became a nation in 1948. Guess what? We see armies can pass all the way around Israel, just like was prophesied in the Bible. And what? We can see the desolation is near because they're fixing to build this temple that, that the desolation is set up in. So how close are we to the coming, second coming of Jesus? Very close. We're here. I believe this generation will see it. I believe it will, too. I, that's what I teach. I know that Jesus will be. I know people for 2,000 years have said Jesus is coming back, but they've missed what the prophecy said. The biggest prophecy is Israel returning back to the land. And if it's written in his word, and Hosea says you're going to be cast out for 2,000 years, and then I will bring you back, he wasn't coming back for 2,000 years, and he didn't. But he does say the generation that sees these things happening, I'm coming back in that generation. Steve, we used to sing a song in the church growing up um, about the eastern gate and um, when I, I've been made a couple trips to Israel and attempted another um, and I've seen those gates that haven't swung on those old rusty hinges in 2,000 years but you can stand and look from the Mount of Olives over the Kidron Valley and you'll see the walled city of Jerusalem. And you'll see that, that gate there, the golden gate. And, and Jesus, when he, when he does return, it talks about him walking through that gate again and stepping foot over across the Kidron Valley and putting his foot on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives splitting in half. Wow. Powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, to think that I would have the opportunity to live in this time is just, it, it's a blessing to be alive at this time. And we, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on. Now, there's a lot of stress in this world. And sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm tired of this. I, I'm ready for Jesus to come. And then I start thinking about lost family members and people that I need to focus on winning to Christ. And I start thinking about the vision that God's given us here at Covenant to, um, to, to reach people and empower people. And, 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 and then I, I start thinking, oh, Jesus, you know, give me a little bit longer, you know. But I, when I think about, I think about pestilence, I was telling you about, and we're seeing that. Uh, but there's one more thing that we're not, that we don't talk about a lot that we're seeing. Uh, and we've seen a lot of it, and that's earthquakes. Just in Knoxville, two, I think it was two, three weeks ago. You know, I looked one. up the word, you know, it says you'll see um, earthquakes in diverse places. The word diverse means of a different kind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, that's a whole long rabbit trail anyway, so mm -hmm. I won't go into that one right yet. But I would love to escape this world today. My spirit would. But my spirit also wants to stay in this world and teach people who are lost about Jesus. You know, so I'm torn between the two. You know, and, um, you know, and we've got family members, just like everybody has family members that are lost. Um, but Jesus has given us a timeline in his word. He tells us exactly when he's going. Now, he tells us the events of the things that is going to come. 
Now, I cannot tell you the day or the hour this world leader was standing in a Jewish rebuilt temple claiming to be the Messiah. But the Bible tells you that night, when that day happens, the church will be raptured that night. I, I've, the, it's in his word. It's nothing I'm making up or anything like that. And it talks about that in Luke. I think it's either 17 or 21. Because in Luke, it talks about it both places. It talks about the second coming. But in one of it, what if Satan comes claiming to be the son of man, the angel of light. He comes masquerading himself as the angel of light. Mm -hmm. If you read, a, a lot of this stuff in the scripture tells us, um, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Yes. The very next, if you just keep reading it, it says, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. So he's coming as a thief in the night. When the Jewish people say, finally, we got peace and safety. Well, it had to be a Jewish nation again because the Jewish people is the ones that say we finally have peace and safety. Right. There, um, this, is, this is, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen according to the, to the word of God. If it don't happen, it'll make me a false prophet. But, and yeah, I know what happens to prophets, so false prophets. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is, this is what I believe, is, I truly believe this is what God teaches in his word. Or I would not be wasting your time. And the people's time out here, you know, that's on the Internet or wherever. Um, but there's going to be a seven-year covenant signed with Israel soon. If you read what happens during the sixth trumpet era in the book of Revelation, during the sixth trumpet era is when the Bible tells us, he says, measure the temple and the altar, but leave out the outer gates for it's going to be trodden down by the Gentiles. So it's during that sixth trumpet era that the Jews are going to rebuild their temple. They're measuring the temple now as we're living. And it, and it says, you know, it says we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling line at the last trump. Well, read what happens at the, at the seventh trumpet in the book of Revelation. That's when it says Satan is cast to the earth and, and we are going to heaven. It says, it says, rejoice ye in heavens, for you have overcome now by the blood of the Lamb. You know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But it talks about at the seventh trumpet. Read what happens during the seventh trumpet. Now, a lot of people have said that the whole book of Revelation is God's judgment. The, God does not say that. In the end of Revelation, it says, I write these. He says, seal not the prophecies of the saying of this book. It's given to the churches. The churches should be telling people what's happening in the book of Revelation. What people do as they say that the whole book of Revelation is judgments. But God does not say that anywhere. He says, my judgment, my wrath is filled up in the vials, which come after Satan's wrath upon the earth. Because the very first thing that judge, God judges is all those people who have taken the mark of the beast. And he says, a, a great sore will come upon them. That's the very first uh, judgment that comes upon the earth. All of these others are prophecies. Just like in the book of Daniel, Daniel wrote Daniel and did not understand what it said. He prayed to God, God, give me, what am I writing here? And, and God said, it's not for you to know. Seal it up until the time of the end. People wow. will be running to and fro, and knowledge greatly increased. So That's where we're at. Isn't it? Right now, technology is doubling faster than they can even, they got artificial intelligence, AI. Which, well, it, it knows more than you'll ever. All this stuff that we put in the cloud, this AI is learning. It, just like uh, Alexa and all these things we put in our house, read the directions carefully. It says we're, we're learning who comes in your house, how to accommodate them, what they like and stuff. Why is that? God is all-knowing. Satan wants to be all-knowing. How can Satan be all-knowing? Unless it's a technology that we allow in our house, in, and, and it's part of life. I mean, we're going to, it's just part of it. We're going to, I got technology. We talk to Siri all the time, ask her all kinds of crazy questions. But it's always listening. And this technology is just like some of the t uh, smart TVs you got. You, right. you it tells you if you got something private to say, don't say it in front of the TV because there's a third party listening. Do you know that? I did not know that. Yep. I mean, I've heard people say that, but I really didn't know if, the, if that was legit uh, or, or not. Well, let me ask you this. Our time, our time is actually up, and we're, we've got to wind it down, and uh, we'll have to have you come back um, if you'd like to do that with us. But um, let me ask you, what in your family 
you, you and Sister Veronica, your wife, and, and you have some of the most amazing kids, I think. Um, I, I, I love your kids. They're just great. Um, but what, how has this affected your family? What kind of change has this last six or eight weeks what is there any change merited through this do you look at anything different now than you used to or we get better home cooked meals <laughs> <laughs> but no I, I see um you know it just seems surreal i mean it just don't even seem like i don't even know how to explain it i i know that's that this is going a lot deeper than what we can even talk about today um I know what the world agenda, I know what Satan has planned in this world. I know that they're wanting to depopulate the earth. Um, there's even a, a, a Stonehenge in, in, um, in Georgia, I think it says, to keep the population at 500,000 people or something crazy like that. But why would that be there? And, no, and they say that nobody even knows how it got there or where it got there. So, I mean, there, there's a, if you research it, research what is the biggest pandemic on earth? You know what it is? What? Human. This is what these global elites will say, that humankind is the disease of the earth, and they want to get rid of us. Well, the Bible prophesies that one out of third, every third people is going to die before the rapture of the church. And it says it's through fire, brimstone, and smoke, but then you keep on down it and says these are plagues. I mean, so... COVID-19 is a plague. It's a plague, yes. I mean, so, you know, the thing is, in the book of Revelation also, during the sixth trumpet era, John sees and was fixing to write the seven trumpets. And God said, don't write those. We don't know what the seven trumpets are, but it happens between the sixth trumpet and the seven, I'm at the uh, seven thunders, I'm sorry. He says, you know, he's selling seven thunders, and he was fixing to write. But he right. says, don't write those. But it's right in between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet. He was going to write um, the, the thunders. So there's some things that God wants secret, but there's other things God has openly told us, but we don't believe. One of the, one of the things that, dis, that just absolutely disheartens God or displeases God is unbelief. You know, he wants us to believe what he told us. I mean, it's in black and white, you know, and, but a lot of people, and I know some people's like, well, that's your interpretation of it, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. No, it's, it's God's interpretation. Exactly. If you read what, the Bible will um, interpret itself if you read on. You can't take one verse of the Bible and make a doctrine out of it. But you take the, the Bible from the beginning to the end, and you put everything together. It's just like in the, the four Gospels. Well, some people say that they contradict each other. No, they don't contradict. You put the story of each one of them together, and it gives you a perfect picture of what God's talking about. Right. It's the same way with the whole Bible. You, put the, you read the whole Bible. You take what does Daniel say about the end time? What does Ezekiel say? What does Hosea say? What does um, Zechariah say? What does, I mean, the, the whole book. You read what the whole book says, and it paints a perfect picture of what's going to happen in the last days. We can see it, and why God chose me, I have no idea. I can't even read and write. If it wasn't for my wife making me look smart, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, I couldn't even write one of these posts. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Tell me very quickly, back to the question, what has it made? Is it brought any a change of perspective, any different appreciation? For each other, for family, for lost people, for your, uh, it, what about an appreciation for the, the church body? Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I am lonely in this sanctuary on Sunday. We, this is, this has really bothered us. Um, I couldn't tell you, you know, we don't miss Sunday church. Whether it's coming here to visit you all, mm -hmm. our home church, other churches at night, you know, Sunday night, Wednesday, my daughter is devastated that she don't have a Awanas no more. You know, mm -hmm. she loves going to church. She loves being with her friends. She loves being with Christian friends. Yes. Um, the church, you know, this building's not the church. You know, the people are the church. Right. And we miss the fellowship. 
Uh, my daughter misses a fellowship. We miss fellowship. I sing in the choir. Me and my wife sing in the choir. We love singing in the choir. You know, we can't even do that no more. I'm a, it's like, and it, it, it keeps, I keep going back to what Jesus said. Do not forsake yourselves, the assembly together with believers, even so much more as you see this day approaching. Why did God put that in there? You know? Yes, and it looks as if that we're being made uh, and trying to be coerced into not meeting at all. You know, what? Well, another thing that bothers me, too, is, is, you know, we can't even go visit our family, but you can go to the store and stand right next to somebody. That, I mean, I just, it's, it's, it all blows my mind how they're, they're, they're doing all this stuff with this, uh, mm -hmm. this pandemic. Hey, go know. to Home Depot or Lowe's. It's nuts. Every, it drives me crazy. It almost seems as if every household in America is remodeling oh, yeah. or, or working on their house or their garden. Or, or something. Oh, yeah. Go to any of the, you know, uh, Rural King or, or, or Tractor Supply and stuff like that. It's, it's crazy. I mean, everybody's buying up everything. And I mean, and now there's a meat shortage. We, we, yeah. What about that? You know, that's another thing. I mean, you see all these farmers, they're having to dump their crops and stuff that they've grown all year. There's, there's stuff on the Internet they can't even get rid of, but yet we're fixing it. Again, it goes all in. I think there's something bigger going on. Mm -hmm. You know, they're shutting all the meat uh, the producing places down to where they're not preparing meat for people to buy. They're shutting the farmers down to where they can't sell all this stuff. Eventually, and I hate to say this, and it may not be this time, but it is coming. There's going to be chaos in the world. I hate even saying it, but I believe that it's planned and out of it, there's a saying, out of chaos comes order. And we know the Bible talks about a new world order coming. And it, everywhere you look now, it's world pandemic, world this, world that. There's a new world order here that the Bible prophesies would happen before he returns. We're living in that one world order. And it started back, I mean, if you look on the back of your $1 bill, it says, uh, Novus Ordo Corolla, whatever it was, and it means one world order. Um, we're living in that time to where, I mean, when have you ever seen the whole world shut down over a virus? Never in my Never. lifetime. Yeah, it's not that the world hasn't seen it. It's not in my my lifetime yeah. have we seen it. So, how do we prepare for what's coming? spiritually you have to trust that god knows what he's doing and be born again yeah T tell me what the b being born again means steve well jesus christ come to this earth. It, it all goes back to the beginning with adam and eve god created a perfect world and he gave man a choice because he didn't want to create robots to love him you know you know yourselves, if you're married, you have loved ones, kids, whatever, you cannot force love on you. So God gave us that free will. But God says, and he says, he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, God the Father loved us so much that he sent his son to this earth to die for our sins. The Bible talks about, you know, going all the way back to Genesis, you know, sin brought forth death into the world. And the only sacrifice for sin is death. Um, that's why they do all the animal sacrifices and everything in Israel. And they, that's why they're wanting to rebuild this third temple is because they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. They are literally looking for the Messiah to come at any minute. They're even preparing their police force for this. But Jesus already did this for us 2,000 years ago. Yes. He came. He died on the cross. He suffered a death that we deserve. He did not do anything to deserve his death. And God's love for us is so amazing that he wants everyone to believe in his son. It's a free gift. There's no works that can, that can ever and you cannot earn God's love, uh, way into heaven, but it's a free gift. He gave it to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Wow. All who believe, all who repent, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
And you go in the book of Acts, he says, you know, when, you know, the, the, uh, they was teaching, you know, what, you crucified the Messiah and everything. Well, what must we do to be saved? And he said, believe and be baptized. I believe one of the, you know, the, one of the commands that Jesus, the very first command that Jesus asked of us is to be baptized. And, it, you know, it, it, it shows that we are in fellowship with him. If we can't even uh, obey the first, uh, the first commandment, how are we going to do all the rest of them? But Jesus himself came to this earth, died on a cross, suffered the sins that we deserve, and he is our adversary, he's our, he's our savior, he's our uh, propitiation, he's, he's our everything. Now, what we need to do in this time is put our trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, I, I believe that God will take care of his people. Now, Will his people go through persecution? Yes. The Bible tells us that God's people will go through the persecution. But it says, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. For your reward is going to be great in heaven. This, all this little stuff here on this earth is nothing compared to eternity. We are going to live eternity, and we'll never even think about this time again. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll, it's going to be so amazing. You know, the Bible says you, you can't even fathom the things that's, that God has planned for his children. You know, and that could be here on the earth and in spiritual and, and in later. You know, there's going to be a day, you know, uh, he makes a new heaven and a new earth. He's going to wipe away every tear. Everything's going to be made as it was from the beginning. But guess what? We're going to live with Christ as it was planned to be. A perfect peace. A perfect life. No sin. A, a body without could uh, decay. Um, Disease or anything. Man, I tell you that. God is amazing, and we just have to trust that he knows what he's doing. So bottom line is people are going to live one or two places. Uh, they're going to live in fear or they're going to live in faith. Yes. And, f- and fear is the devil's faith. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible even that. tells us about, you know, I did not give you a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but of a sound mind. Right. All this stuff, is, you know, even if they persecute you, just like all the apostles, um, you know, and, and the prophets in the old days, and, and, you know, Stephen, the first martyr, you know, he looked up into heaven and says, God, and, and did just like Jesus did, forgive them. They do not want to know what they're doing. You know, there's a lot of blinded people on this earth, and Satan is, you know, has blinded the eyes, and people don't want to know the truth. They, they suppress the truth. they like, I don't want God, even though the evidence is, uh, is everywhere that God is real. There's more evidence of Jesus dying on the cross than they are pretty much anything else in the world <laughs> amen steve we're out of time so if people want to f- uh, you, uh you got your your uh, facebook page your uh, my, my uh, your facebook page uh, if they want to if they want to go there and read some of your posts and join you have how many followers on that page well, right now, if they don't shut me down, <laughs> Facebook, uh, we've got almost 600,000 followers from people all over the world. A lot of Muslims. Now, not every, of course not everybody agrees with me. And, and, and I say, you know, you don't have to agree with me. But instead of just saying I don't agree with you or that's wrong, show me in the Bible where it's wrong. You know, and I, let me look at it. But this is what God has called me to in these last days. And, and I told God when I gave my life to him, I'll do anything it is you want me to do. And I didn't have a clue what it was. So, <laughs> and I was like, God, what can one person uh, that was do? Wasn't it? Yeah, I'm like, what can one person do? And then it was like, you know, social media reach pretty much anybody. And I'm like, yeah. So I started a Facebook page, and that has almost 600,000 people following it. But the name of the, uh, the page is The Second Coming of Christ Jesus and the Rapture. Um, it's at Great Tribulation um, Coming. Great Tribulation coming. Um, you can look it up, and it'll bring down to that, that, that website also. Yeah, and stay tuned because uh, there, there's some st- other stuff. Steve's got some more teaching on Revelation that is coming. he's coming out with, and, um, and we're going to launch a new website here for long. And um, uh, there's lots of things uh, coming. I, I, I know I feel like this is going to be your year. Uh, to I, I believe that, that the impact that... Uh, that you're going to have is going to be even greater. I think what has happened is going to help propel that. And um, but uh, Steve, we're going to, we got to we got to go. But I want you to pray. Take a moment and pray for the people, would you? Yes. First of all, Tony, 
I would like to say thank you so, so much for listening to me, for believing in what God is doing through me. Because it ain't me. I don't know nothing. I, I'm just a country boy that does interior work. But through God's word, you know, and it, it's amazing. We can, we can show people that Jesus Christ is on the way. And I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for, uh, for trusting and being mine and Veronica's friend, my family's friend. And uh, it's been a great blessing. Uh, we love you all to death. We love Covenant Life Church. And um, I just pray that I could go to many churches and teach because God's people need to know what's going on. And, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only person out there that's teaching, you know. No, but you know what? I don't find a lot of people today that have just made this their thing. And, and, and I know you've got many things, but but you you have you have a, a good word and you have a a, a a prophetic warning for the church uh, to prepare the the church for the rapture but listen we have to go uh, we you'll come back i will i'll pray I, for you yes you've got to come back but listen i want you to pray for the people watching and listen if you have any questions right now you can post them and we will make sure that um, Steve can get them, and, and he'll do his best to answer them. But you'll have to post your questions uh, here online, okay? All right, Steve's going to pray for you. And if you're watching and do not know Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the greatest opportunity uh, that you'll ever have. Today is the day of salvation. Steve, lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for loving us enough to give us your word. This is a letter to us from you. God, thank you for sending your son to this earth to die on a rugged cross for us. I pray for the people that's out there that don't understand, who's blinded or, you know, may have questions, don't know Jesus. There's so many pastors. I mean, if you go to your local pastor church or contact us or, or however, we would love to sit down and pray with you all. Um, show you what it means to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God, I pray that I pray that this just opens up your appetite to see the second to, to see the prophecies come unfold in, in front of us, Lord. God, I, I pray for these people that um, that maybe have so many questions that don't know what's going on in the world. Each one of us families have lost family members. Um and they, they probably think that we're just some kind of crazy people. But, Lord, we are a peculiar people. You say that in, in, in your word. Lord, uh, just thank you for this time. Thank you for, for Covenant Life Church. Thank you for all that you do. I pray for these people. I pray that they come to, to know you as Lord and Savior. There is no other name in, in heaven by which a man be saved other than Jesus Christ. It's the Jesus Christ of the Bible. we got to watch for other other. Um, uh, other uh, Jesus is because there's so many different Jesus. There's a lot of different people believe in Jesus, but it's the Jesus of the Bible, the Son of God, the God of this world, the Creator of all things, Lord. That's who we must put our faith and our salvation in, Lord. We thank you for this free gift. It's in the Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us tonight, and we hope you were blessed by this. If you'd like to know more about Steve, check him out on Facebook. Also, uh, we look forward to seeing you this weekend on the 3rd at 10 a.m. right here at North Campus. Good morning, Covenant Life Online Church. We're so glad that you have tuned in with us today. During this time that we are unable to have community church, you need to make sure that you stay connected through social media and other communication outlets. To ensure that you remain up to date with what is happening at CL, you can text a capital CL to 865-272-0009. Hit send and a link will be sent for you to follow so that you can submit your contact information. Because we are unsure how long we will need to operate in this capacity, previously planned events are on hold until further notice. To stay up to date with your tithes and offerings, we have multiple ways for you to do so. You can use mail, you can give through online giving, or you can use text to give. At Covenant Life, we're excited to tell you about the easiest way for you to help the ministry through text to give. 
It's a fast, convenient, and secure opportunity for you to support your church. Simply text 4448 to the phone number 206-859-9405, hit send, and you'll receive a link to set up a payment with your preferred debit or credit card. And after a few simple steps, giving is as easy as sending a text message. If you need more information, you can check out our website at www.co.life. Thank you for your generous support at Covenant Life. Each gift makes it possible to connect people to the message of Jesus Christ around the world as well as people right here at home. We hope that you enjoy the service today and we know that God can move even through a camera lens. So let's prepare ourselves for something great because God is on the move. Have a blessed week. We love you and we are praying for you. Hey folks, Pastor Tony here. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to come be with us on May 3rd. On May 3rd, here in just a few short days, we're going to be honoring all the essential workers in the Anderson County and the Knox County and Campbell County and in other surrounding counties. We are going to take a moment out of service to honor each and every one of, of our essential workers. It's going to be a great day. In fact, it's all going to be outside. We're going to ease back in to this coming back into the sanctuary. And so this service will be entirely outdoors. Bring your lounge chairs. It's not a drive-in service. It is just a service where we are going to give honor to whom honor is due. We love you and you are personally invited. I want you to be my guest. Come and help me celebrate and honor these people who've laid their lives on the line. Would you help me? That is May 3rd, 10 a.m., Covenant Life Church, Norris Campus.